What's up, guys? This is Courtney, one half of the Recipe Construction here, and this is episode two of uh, the podcast for Power Rangers Month. Um, we have Bruce here, and we also have a special guest. Um, our our editor in chief. <laughs> yeah, the editor, the EIC, <laughs> um, Bobbert. You probably fucking knew What's that. What's crap? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why I said it, because I knew I was going to get that type of reaction. It was great. Um, our good friend, Rob, uh, we know him from the, from the convention. Um, I think that's where it was PMC3. Which one did you kind of kind of go over your origin, uh, Rob? I think you the first one you went to was two. Yeah, I started my, my first PMC was PMC two, and I went on a whim. Um, it was supposed to be me and uh, the girl I was dating uh, at the time. Uh, now, baby mama, hmm. who uh, she was too close to. We were three months from my daughter being born so yes yeah. so she backed out so i ended up traveling across the united states by myself yeah nice. fine. coming coming from philly to california didn't know a single soul and uh met a couple people at that show and then once that show ended it was kind of like a you know uh are you guys going again and blah 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 so then by PMC3 is when I met the two of you. It was yeah. brief, couple couple passings here and there. Yeah. Um, and then I guess for the course of the two years, it was kind of like Facebook here and there. Um, you know, and then everybody was there for four. We spent more time together, got to know each other a little bit more than just, you know, in passing. <clears throat> and then it was after that that uh, – um, you know, it's just been goddamn daily now. Yeah. <laughs> Deal with these two fuckers. Yeah. We have invaded your life and you cannot get rid of us. Nope. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. That, that's, uh, that's basically how we... Uh, and, it, and it's hilarious, too. Just like Bruce and I were talking on the, the lead-up uh, episode mm -hmm. for, for PR Month. Um, it's crazy the friendships that we made because of Power Rangers and the convention. Like, yeah, it went from running into each other at PMC three. Obviously, you know, adding each other on Facebook and everything like that, kind of keeping tabs and hey, are you going to the next one? Blah blah blah, this and that. Kind of planning a little bit more and then saying, hey, I'm getting out there this day. When are you? Blah, whatever. And then it's just like fucking. It's like we've known each other for fucking fifteen years. Like we, yeah. See each other? Was it like it's, it's been six years now? And we see each other for a weekend or a week every uh, other I've, year. I've physically been in your presence maybe twenty days. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Over the course of six years. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happens, you know. Yeah. I'm on the East Coast. Courtney's South. I'm West Bruce, Coast. You're like the top. No, uh, no, you're you're Northwest yeah. in yeah. no man's I, land where I can I can walk to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> you may want to that's where toys r us is right. yeah okay but uh let, let's get into it we are going to be talking about the state of power rangers yep. um oh, so <laughs> hasbro has purchased power rangers the entire just uh property yeah well let's let's start at the beginning it was mm -hmm. it was surprising but not completely unexpected mm -hmm. that they were given master toy rights pretty much right out from underneath Bandai's nose. Yeah, I am pretty sure Bandai had no idea that that was coming. Yeah, well, that, they announced that's that where they were it started. A, they announced that they were in a partnership with Bandai, and then what, a week or two later, it's like, up oh, Hasbro's taking over again. A couple of days later, up oh, Hasbro now owns Power Rangers. Yeah, I don't know if it was that quick, but it was it was quick. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was quick. So in my in my opinion, just having a little, little bit of insight on how normal things would have gone, this has been in the works for, for a while. Yeah. There's no way that they just randomly one day said, 
oh, yeah, here, you can have the rights. There had to have been something that was talked about. Now, I know mm-hmm. I read a few things where it said that Haim Saban and I believe, I guess, maybe the president or CEO of, of Hasbro or like good personal friends. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where it stemmed. And I guess maybe Saban, just like he did when he sold to Disney, kind of saw the writing on the walls, maybe. Like, oh, it's yeah. starting to die down. I, this is where I kick it out and, and just kind of get rid of it. Or he's finally realized, you know what? I think it's time to be done. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to wrap this in. with. Um, so I read the uh, X-Men animated series making up book. And one of the things that it points out with Haim is that he does not care about story. He just cares about doing shit cheaply. Oh, yeah. and, and, like, uh, looking at once he like, took back over the, the series, the writing has been getting worse and worse. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's, while you bring that up, so mm-hmm. if, I'm not mistaken, Chip Lynn has been on the last two series, Dino Charge and Ninja Steel, correct? Yes. Okay. So now he's going to be on Beast Morphers as well. Mm -hmm. Dino Charge, to me, wasn't bad. It wasn't. No. It was enjoyable to a point. There were some some aspects of it that kind of – it. I don't know. I think they just got lazy towards the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, There was a lot more they could have done. But – I really don't know how it's going to work with with the uh, um, shit. I'm drawing a blank. Go Buster footage. Yeah, I have a feel. There's going to be a lot of original stuff. I mean, that was one of the driving forces be- behind you know the Super Mega and mm-hmm. the Super Samurai and the Super Dino whatever was for toy sales. That's what the from my understanding was the leading point in. We're going to make this original suit just for toy sales. Now, do you think they're going to go the same route? I'm pretty sure Hasbro is going to stay pretty true because that, that, based on what I've read, it seems like it's going to go that way. Yeah, but again, that's like just having, rumor based. Having watched Go Buster from start to finish and knowing about all how their toy sales dipped. Um, and so the, to the point where they just redid the series midway in, but keep kept it sort of the same. It's like, see, my I kind of trust Hasbro to just make quality toys. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, look at what they're doing with the Black Series. Look at what they're doing with Marvel <laughs> Legends. I mean, I just read an article that, you know, I'm going a little off topic. It is PR, yeah. but we're hopefully in the next set of those ride figures that they're doing right now is going to be Xavier in his gold chair. Like they're pushing the envelope and they're giving fans what they want. And that's the one thing that we've all said from Bandai. Just you have our words daily. Mm -hmm. This is wrong. We needed this. You could have done that, but they just, they, they dropped the ball in my opinion. And I think Hasbro probably paid attention on all that. And, they're probably going to get hounded at San Diego. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I hope to Christ that they actually listen, because that's the only thing that's going to save them and save this franchise is if they they do what's necessary and not just what's going to help them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think they're, they're going to they're, they're gonna do a good job of listening. I think it probably will take just a tad bit of time, but I think they, they are going to listen to... Um, and, and take into consideration what the fans are asking for. Because even, um, I don't know about you, but I follow a few um, toy collectors on YouTube, and one of them, you know, goes to the conventions and he interviews the people from, from Hasbro for his channel and shit like that. And, uh, you know, for a while, in, in the Marvel Legends community, they've been asking for double jointed elbows on the female figures and I think they did that with the Proxima Midnight figure for the Infinity War wave and they were saying you know we're testing it out now we listen, we're listen, we listening to you guys we're just seeing what works right now but we are yeah, I, you guys so I think they are I'm, going to listen I'm pretty sure 
I watched the exact same video. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the one thing. It's Hasbro's smart with what they do. Yeah. They find a, every toy review video I watch for Marvel Legends, it's always the same thing. This is this character's buck. This is the, the Hyperion mold, and this is that, and this is, oh, you know, this is the Bucky cap. Mold, whatever the case is, yeah. they're smart. When they, when they build and they design, they see the future. They see, okay, this could be used here, this could be used there. Yep. Except for a couple of those, you know, obviously like the the build of figures, they're they're kind of one offs, yeah. Um, just because of their sheer size and and what they're using for them, but yeah. If if Hasbro is smart, which we clearly know they are, they've done. I mean, shit, they could turn around and say, hey, guess what? We're gonna pop GI Joe out again, and guess what's gonna be flying off the shelves? GI yeah. Joe, yeah. Be- because it happens every time. I never owned a G.I. Joe until they did the 25th anniversary and I bought everything. <laughs> everything. So it's, it's you know, and they've, they've had Transformers this entire time. That clearly isn't dying. Now they're doing, you know, their retro. That's probably my only fear. And this is me just being completely honest. I have this gut feeling that they're going to take Transformers, they're going to paint them to look like Megazords. And it's like, oh, it's this is your new type thing. Like, yeah. I, yeah. Can res- I can respect... You know, going that, that route, like kind of redesigning for a one-off, but really you got to stay true to to what it is. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, on the other front, so the ratings for the show have been declining steadily, and one of my hopes with Hasbro taking over is okay because with the toys. You have your built-in audience. No matter what you release, Power Ranger fans are going to buy it. Because it's just, it's the nature of the beast right at the moment. You know, 25 years, so on and so forth. But with the show, you're not gaining any new fans because the quality's dipping. So I just, with Hasbro just owning all aspects, I kind of want them to focus more on st- telling a decent story for the series. Yeah. Because that's what that's what got me hooked, and that's what I want, like, you, you build, you, like, you got your parents watching with their kids, like, hey, this is what I watched as a child, and let's watch this together. But it's hard to sit through. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, all right. So I guess I can have a different outlook, given that yeah. I'm, out of the three of us, the only one with a kid. Yeah, that, that, um, that we know about. <laughs> oh, yeah, we don't know what you got going on. I mean... Um, Left so right. I, uh, I have, <laughs> I have learned. Yeah, I'm gonna just skate right by that one. <laughs> I've learned now that I have a child and watching the idiotic programming that is built for children, mm-hmm. and I'm saying like Dora, I you know, I wouldn't yeah. let my kid watch it because I just felt like it wasn't, it wasn't good enough. For her brain at the time, yeah, yeah. It you know was what I mean. No gargoyles. Yeah. So I kind of I went backwards, and you know I introduced her to Animaniacs, and she loves it. Uh, Power Rangers, she loves it. Um, of course, she at this point she still isn't. She's seven, so if she sees green, it's Tommy. If she sees pink, it's Kimberly. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're getting to the point now where. She's she's understanding that oh these are these are different it's not the same and she enjoys that stuff now granted she'll be watching like every day it's like Vampirina and that drives me up a wall <laughs> but I I see where she's enjoying it right yeah so because of all of this even going back when she was three years old and four years old I've learned to look at it differently. Right. So best example I can say is like Ninja Turtles, the previous incarnation of Ninja Turtles, I don't feel was built for kids. I felt Mm -hmm. it was built for nostalgia with a touch of kids. Right. But Power Rangers still every season, I feel, is literally directed towards kids and having a kid. I'm able to look at it differently. I don't look at it as. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this for me. 
I'm enjoying it because my child is enjoying it. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's that's where my mindset is with Power Rangers anymore. I can never look at it like a serious thing. Like, but, I even I, I I try to certain things like mm-hmm. RPM beginning RPM that had a good feel to it. SPD yes. had a good feel to it. Time Force had a good feel t- throughout. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel that, you know, that's the road they got to take. They got to take that middle ground, almost the nostalgic side of it, but for kids. Yeah. And yeah, that's the only way it's going to work. With the recent series on, on that front, have you found a series that had outside of Dino Charge that's had that middle ground where you can sit there and you both can enjoy it for different aspects? Um, I mean, taking away the originals, mm-hmm. I mean, she enjoyed Samurai. I felt that Samurai, Samurai was the first full season that I watched after SPD, mm-hmm. right? I, I didn't, st- when I went to PMC2 was where I really got introduced to other seasons after Zio and that wasn't Dino Chart or Dino Thunder. Mm-hmm. I went back and then this was before Netflix had it. I watched Lost Galaxy on, on YouTube, start to finish. I watched RPM on, on YouTube, start to finish. And it RPM pulled me back in. Yeah. That was probably should have been the last one that I watched. <laughs> <laughs> because it didn't get better from there. Yeah. But I've just been able to kind of put myself in a position where I understand what they're doing. This is not built for 25-year-olds and 30-year-olds and 35-year-olds, and in some cases, 45-year-olds, which I'm still confused about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I just, I, I just, everything, I just look at it as it's built for a kid. It should matter to a kid if i don't get it that's fine but as long yeah. as my kid gets it then that's that's all i give a shit about all right but at the same token you know going back to the whole ratings drop and whatnot she, she hasn't wanted me to buy anything from ninja steel she doesn't want anything from ninja steel it hasn't connected with her yeah and she's older now you know like yeah. she wanted megaforce god, god knows why but she did <laughs> she wanted dino charge and you know i got i picked up things here and there but like this one just doesn't connect with her at all and it's, because it's not connecting with her i i'm not giving it i'm not giving it time i gave it a shot in the beginning and i just it didn't it didn't grab me see i know uh, i'll equate it to like with, with our nephew like i wa- i sat there and watched him watch samurai because i was doing nowhere near that series and you know and like so, watch watching him watch uh, Samurai at how old, he was five, and he's now eleven. And he he's on a different stuff. Whereas with me, when Power Rangers started, the show steadily matured with me, which is why I kept going back every now and then. So to the point where when Time Force hit, that was like one of the most adult series, and I was a young adult at the time, and I can just sit there and was like, oh, you still watch Power Rangers? Like this guy is one of the greatest romance arc like one of the best personal stories that you can ever see and you know it it matured with me and i don't see because with with, oh as it's called neo saban it's like a reboot every year and it's like back to the beginning whereas there's not a steady uh, uh, even a slight increase in all right our our audience is one to two years older now let's give them something to keep them hooked on all right how about Let's mature it up a little bit. And that I haven't seen any of that from the episodes that I try to force myself to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I didn't know Operation Overdrive existed until I saw promos for their crossover. Uh, and Adam, I know, Adam was my favorite. So it's mm-hmm. like once I saw the promos with him, I was like, oh, I'll watch this. Of course, I didn't watch it when it happened. I, you know, it took a little while for me to watch it, but yeah. I watched it and I looked at it for what it was. Didn't care about the other characters whatsoever, of and not. you know, that's that. <laughs> yeah, that's that. So, what? you know, I have a feeling it's going to be the exact same thing when they do the crossover with this series. You mm-hmm. know, are we calling it a crossover? It's not a crossover uh, because it's, it's an, just anniversary? an anniversary thing, right? Yeah. Well. well 
this one compared to the 20th anniversary, I feel like they put a little bit more effort into it if the rumors are true. Mm-hmm. The rumors state that there's an actual story that's built around the anniversary characters, such as, oh, they're just there to be there. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, at least they put the effort in. Yeah. I'll give that a shot. I'll watch that for what it is. And, you know, it is what it is. I got to okay. look, look at it. I got to look at it like, you know, kids enjoy it, and that's what matters. But clearly, I don't think kids are enjoying it right now. Yeah. Okay, well, since they're, they're bringing back past Rangers, most of them from original Saban era, like um, that, there's a there's a there's a Disney in there. True, but I mean, you know, it's like for for me, anniversary episodes are not geared toward the current fans. They're geared toward the fans that watch at their previous the, the previous young fans. Is like, okay, you're you're doing something for me. Let me let me yeah. watch this. What do you think of the Rangers that they're bringing back? So I only know of, I think, five that are confirmed. Mm-hmm. The others are basically a rumor. Yeah. So do you want me to go down the list? Let's, go Let's do it. Because I'm, I'm probably the All only right. person in the group that doesn't... Uh, I don't always follow PRE moves. But some, yeah, most of you time, don't follow our chats either, jerk off. I was just about to say, the only time that I do follow something is in the chats. And even then, I'm just opening them up to clear the goddamn notification off my phone. Yeah, yeah. so from what I read, um, I actually read it like a week or two ago. And I think I did share the, the, the article that I found. But from my yeah. understanding, it's somewhere in this two-part arc. It shows that Tommy and Kat have stayed an item. Mm-hmm. They have a child. Tommy needs to go. Something involving child. <laughs> with former Rangers, past and present, whatever. And the list are Tommy and Kat. Mm-hmm. Silver RPM. There's your Disney. Yeah. Yellow Mega. I really don't want to say the name, but I will. Rocky. Oh, uh, yeah. He be- if he's not Zio, I'm fighting everybody. <laughs> uh, Selwyn. Something some tells me they're going to make him a uh, Tyrannal Ranger. Who knows? But uh, Selwyn mm-hmm. and I think Jason Font. Don't quote me on that. They're yeah. supposed to be 10. Yeah, They're supposed to be not. 10. How many was that? That was uh, one, two, three, four. Five, that was six. So, yeah, they say that eight were announced and the last two are surprises. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. And, and you know, I think there's only one or two that I could care less about, right? Yeah. Megan didn't sit with me, so it's like, okay, cool. She's coming back. That's cool. That's fine. She was probably the... <sighs> Out of the six of them, there was like two that actually had personality, I felt, yeah. on that series, which was yellow and green. And they had like chemistry as well, part of that series. So, yeah, that's fine. Bring her, her back. Um, you know, but then like Selwyn, like hopefully he gets more to do than he did in the 20th. Because, you know. Like, I feel like some of this is an apology to like Font and uh, Selwyn. It was like, they, they did you dirty last time. We, we we owe you an apology. Maybe, but I don't I don't remember if I if I saw Font or not. He, I forget. He, oh, he was in here. Yeah, he, he was, was, yeah, was a part of. Okay. Yeah. Shit, who am I missing then? Either way, uh, I mean, like I said, it's it's that's basically what it is. So how the the current Rangers are going to fit into that story, I don't really know. But then you got to look at it. The next, you know, one shot arc in the Boom Studios comics is the Soul of the Dragon story. That's yeah. basically the same thing that they just announced as far as the arc that they're going to do on Ninja Steel. Yeah. You know, like, he, he's good. The Soul of the Dragon. Uh, uh, they, could, they couldn't have chosen another ranger. 
for this. Like, well, look. It, it might it might have something to do with you know Shattered Grid, which you can't dismiss. Has been a pretty fantastic arc. Oh, Shattered Grid has been a fucking amazing. Yeah. Like, but see, but my favorite part about Shattered Grid is every <laughs> ranger that's appeal. Oh, uh, no, no, no. That's that's my second favorite thing. <laughs> my favorite thing is like every ranger no matter what team that, that has appeared has looked better than they ever have in like the history of the series and the Tommy murder is fucking mag- magnificent <laughs> that's why I left because I thought that was going to be your first thing <laughs> like, yeah but, I mean they're, they're, they're doing good there so it's like hopefully Hasbro has that just kind of sitting in their pocket like we know this works yeah do we follow this? Do we base off this? Do we work with like what? They got to do something. And to be completely honest, as far as Hasbro goes, I think their best bet would be have two ongoing series at all times. One live action, whatever the next season will be, and go back to basics and do an animated. They, yeah. That actually makes a lot of sense. If the budget. They were to go. Do. Dude. If they were to go and do an animated, I don't even care if they did this this Go ninety type series that they did with Transformers. I don't know if you saw this thing that's on Go ninety, uh, Power of the Primes. It's like an ongoing trilogy, and the episodes are maybe like I want to say they're between like six to ten minutes long, but it's mm-hmm. like a full story, right? So when you yeah. break down the trilogy, put it all together, it's like an hour and a half movie. So. If they did something along those lines and just kind of like, all right, well, this this season, it's it's this series and this they can pull all these actors back yeah. and and one employ some of them, like because mm-hmm. we know that some of them are not working. You know, we won't say names, but it's just you don't see them. Right. Mm-hmm. The only time you might see them is maybe a convention here and there or, you know, something pops up like where was was Wild Force Red before he came back to Samurai? Uh, he was on that, uh, what was he that chick's name? It, it, was, um, it was a reality show <laughs> where he was yeah, trying he was to be like someone's kept dancer, man. Right? Yeah, yeah, he's trying to be... Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Listen, but that's the thing. It's like, some have progressed past this and will come back periodically. Like, look at Paul. Paul didn't have to come back and do whatever that was, Hyperforce. Hasbro, if you're listening, stay the fuck away from Hasbro, or ha- Hyperforce. <laughs> stay away. <laughs> Unless you want to give Paul Schreier work. <laughs> Which we co-sign on wholeheartedly. But yeah, it's just... it's They have everywhere to, to go and everything to gain. Mm-hmm. Right? So if the... If the the ratings are down right now. They can only go up because if they go down, then it's done. If yeah. they go any lower than what it is, and it might have something to do with Nickelodeon's ruling. You know, mm-hmm. Nickelodeon has this whole no more than 22. You can do up to maybe two to three specials, which gives 25 per season. But really, there's 40 to 50 episodes that are considered one season and now you got to break it up over two i hope that they just re- let this contract run with nickelodeon and then they go put it on their own channel yeah because then they can do whatever the hell they want see because that and that's one of the drawbacks like it goes 20 22 episodes all right now before this new deal the shortest series was uh Mystic Force with like 32 episodes. Should have been enough, less. Yeah, that's enough time to develop some characters, but Mystic Force is still god awful. Now, when you do, I don't like it. It was. Uh, well, I don't consider it the worst. Oh, it's not, but it was. It was god awful. It's, it's still in the in the the top five worst. Oh yeah. <laughs> Their character development made you hate all their rangers, kind of like Operation Overdrive. But so, and then all right, just, so let's just okay. let's just clarify something here. As far as Operation Overdrive goes, 
I tried giving that a shot when that, you know, whatever episode happened. Mm -hmm. And I never went back. And then I heard the stories about certain actors at the first PMC. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not going to say names or or even go into that story because I'm sure everybody knows. But that that specifically made me just not care at all. Right. Yeah. It's just I couldn't I couldn't at that point. I watched Bokanger. That was like the first Sentai series I watched. And I was like, I, I'm in before the translation. So I'm going to watch Operation Overdraft to see how they do it. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> At every turn, I go. You're. It, it it was the light speed rescue method, which is why I hated it. It was like this is why That's I've chosen you series. to be Rangers. That's another series I haven't finished. I I am having a hard time <laughs> getting through it. Yeah, I think uh, we had to do. I have to watch like. Oh, this, you so. did that. Yeah, you did that thing before PMC last last time, right? Yeah. Or or, or, or was it after? It might have been. When? I know we. I had to watch most of uh, Lightspeed Rescue for something that we were doing, <laughs> and it was like uh, even even when I was younger, like I didn't watch Lightspeed Rescue when it originally aired, but that's because I didn't like the design of the suits. Like I just don't like the way the suits look on Lightspeed Rescue. Uh, they they look weird. It was it was whatever. And so then I watched it, and the the season starts off really really. Um, I don't even remember how it started. Did it start off? They were already rangers. No no no. It started off with the um the dudes. No, with the dudes breaking down to the thing to open up where the demons were and then it went around with pink recruiting everybody mm. oh yeah 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 but it it wasn't it wasn't good and then by but, the time i finished my playthrough i was like eh, it's okay i wouldn't go back and watch it on purpose again yeah like i finished the series i was like we're we going to do the first 20 and i was like let me go through and finish it and it was like there's two likable characters throughout this entire series there was and, yeah, uh, it was okay. I, I wouldn't say likable. There were two characters with personality. Joel, who was a giant fucking asshole, yeah. like just an awful, and then um, was the the Captain Mitchell. Two with personality. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and I think a lot of that has to do with or me trying to watch that had a lot to do with meeting some of them in person, right? Yeah. Um, same thing with with Lost Galaxy. I met a bunch of those actors at PMC2, mm-hmm. and they just seemed like humble, normal, everyday people. So I was like, you know what? They're not those other people that are not humble. So yeah. I'll go and watch their stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I, I enjoyed Lost Galaxy. I didn't okay. think I would. But I enjoyed it. I liked it. I, I liked Lost, Lost See, Galaxy. Lost Galaxy is the, one of the reasons why I couldn't get through Lightspeed. Because Lightspeed ended the chosen method of becoming a ranger. Like, they all, the Quasar Sabres, chose the Lost Galaxy Rangers. Whereas in Lightspeed, they were hired. Okay, this is your job. Which, don't get me wrong, it's, it's I, I have no problem with that. But with... The hiring process. <laughs> it, it was like we 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 have a video we have a video talking about our most uh what is it dislike rangers or most you no the the wor- the t- our top five worst, yeah, worst rangers. rangers and life be yellow it was just like in my explanation at least it's like hey I can understand why you hire everybody else to be a ranger you got a paramedic a firefighter. You know, it's a bit of a stretch, but I can see you hiring somebody that works with animals, who's a, aquatic animals at that. Maybe if there's a deep sea uh, rescue that needs to be done or something like that, he'll know what to do. Or or he needs to fuck that mermaid, which is an actual episode. <laughs> yeah. 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 Jesus Christ. Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, man. 
I am not lying. That is a, no. like a three episode arc. No, that's why I'm Mark just like. the timer. One hour and four minutes it took. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just like, like he might come in here. He just might yeah. come in. Well, apparently he did. <laughs> Clearly, he, he got he got real handy. Right. Um, but it, it, it's like Joel. Even I think Joel was what a, a pilot. Yeah. Okay, so even Joel, I can understand you hiring Joel. He's a pilot, maybe if you don't have anybody else on this fucking in this godforsaken organization that doesn't know how to fly something. Okay, pick pick Joel. He he knows how to pilot. Kelsey is an extreme sports enthusiast. Why the fuck do you pick her? Because she knows how to fucking rock climb. And like, don't forget rollerblades. She spends the most of her time on rollerblades. Right, like dude, like if you gonna pick somebody like that, at least go a fucking. A notable person who's a threat. Pick Sylvester Stallone or some shit. He fucking had uh, uh, Shit. At least he knows how to fucking fight. Like. <laughs> they I, couldn't have made her a lady astronaut. Because then it was episode two. Features a lady astronaut. <laughs> but. But then it gets worse. When, like As we're going back to Operation Overdrive. The criteria the 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 floor or the 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 bar was incredibly low for that. You got a thief, a race car driver, a smart chick, a smoothie stunt man, and some dude's son. <laughs> I love how was, and some dude's son. Wait, what season was that? Oper- Operation Overdrive. Oh, that's why I had no idea what you were talking about. Yes, he was like, I've chosen you to help find these jewels. You, you're an expert thief. You drive a race car, that's going to come in handy some reason. Uh, now, the smart chick, all right, yeah, I'll get. But I don't get the fucking stunt man. Yeah, especially when you got a race car driver. Because if you think if you needed somebody, I can see, okay, they're looking for jewels or whatever like that. You got a thief that can at least come up with a plan to get them undetected. The race car driver, or the, I can see you need a getaway driver. But why? None of the jewels were inside a museum. Okay, I'm trying to reason and see if I can come up with something adequate, and I can't. Don't you see me grasping at fucking straws here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but and it's just like so when you're doing a man-made rangers, it's like the criteria. See, and then you you pull it over to SPD. Like this is their job. I have no problem with rangers being part of their job. And it's like, okay, same with Time Force. They, they were part of the Time Force. It's just their job. And Wes, you know, I'm, I'm not just crediting Wes or anything. Wes was an amazing Red Ranger. But if it's making it part of your job, it gives some more gravitas. Like, you people were chosen to be Power Rangers because you're the best of the best in this field. Not a fucking race car driver in a movie stuntman. Well, that's kind of the same thing with, with RPM. The red, blue, and yellow were hired. That was their position in the city. And then black and green kind of just came on for, you know. They kind of looked into it. Yeah, to a point, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, still, that's that's probably my, my go-to season. That makes but, sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, you suggested I watch RPM for like since I met you, and I finally finished it last year. So. Well, I told you, I told you that like the first half, the concept is there, and mm-hmm. and once you know, once Disney stepped in and made those changes, that's when you could you could see the change in that show. Yeah, it's called Jim and Jimma. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Please don't. Oh, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you know. Uh, so also, it's what happened. Oh, okay. Go, Rob. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, I was like, because what Hasbro also announced that they do plan on keep the Power Rangers movies going. Yeah. Ah, uh, thoughts. So I don't think it should be theatrical right out the gate. Mm-hmm. I mean, just again, because I'm a dad. My little pony was huge in this house. 
Nobody and they, the <laughs> well, regardless, regardless, it took them six or seven seasons before they even jumped to that point yeah. and making a theatrical movie. Mm-hmm. That probably would work with Power Rangers if the ratings are there. But if the ratings are not there, you can't go that route. I see more of their whole thing with, oh, well, we're going to do movies and, you know, we're going to keep that going. The smartest play they can do is, okay, well, Sentai did movies, so we'll just do them. Made for TV. Release them on DVD the following week. Like, that's what they need to do. In my opinion. All right, but as far as content, what would you do for the movies? I just told you. Take the Sentai movies and not make episodes. Make them... Make though because we never got those, right? That is, yeah, that is true. So, oh, um, they kind of threw some into like, so like the uh, Shin Kanger movie was like the second half of the Clash of the Red Rangers. Yes, yes. But had so. they done all of that, I mm. would have gotten my favorite season back on the screen again. In total. You know why they changed his name and they didn't show his face, right? No. Because the second he left Power Rangers, he became a union actor. Oh. Oh. Saban never used union actors. Union actors. That's that's the reason why I think uh, uh, Twee, Walter, and Austin left as well. Yeah, because they wanted wanted agents. They wanted to be official, and they just didn't want to do it. They wanted to keep paying them pennies a week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. All right, but so with me, if I'm doing a theatrical movie, so what I would do is I would just do a theatrical adaption of each adaptation of each series. So I'll start with Mighty Morphin. Yeah. You know, not I, fuck it. I'll just go straight to Zeo because the the. The Sabans with Lionsgate movie, that's just too recent. But I, I'll go into Zeo, you know, hire... Well, hold on. Yeah. Hold, okay. Do you keep the actors or do you recast every film? Uh, I recast every film unless I'm reusing the same characters. Well, that was the question. Yeah. <laughs> do you well, use the same characters or do you recast well, them? So if I'm going... Mighty Morphin to Zeo, Tommy's in both of them, so I'll keep the Tommy actor. You know, that's basically it. And I'm like, I hey, got, this is- I got what you're saying. I get what you're yeah. saying. I mean, in that in that case, I I would probably I would try to make trilogies out of each series a set group. Yeah, that's, right. That's so, what I was going to say. I think, so you um, do Mighty Morphin Zeo, and you know, Turbo if needed. I think you can get two. I think you can get two movies based on Mighty Morphin because they're bringing in Tommy and obviously they want that Green Ranger thing going on. So I think you can do uh, Mighty Morphin with two and then have the third movie be Zio and then go on from there. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, But if we're doing trilogies, I think so you introduce Tommy as the Green Ranger in the second one and then you do like the third one, and it's like, all right, establish, establish. Something happens. Replacement Rangers. Hey, we're now Zeo Rangers. Yeah. Then you don't get Rocky in a Red Ranger suit. <laughs> that, that fixes that. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, I would try to rewrite history as much as possible. Uh-huh. Right? So I did not mind that cast. I didn't either. From I the Lionsgate film. Yeah, I like them. That's why I like if, yeah. if I were going forward with the film, I would still like I, I get what you're saying, Rob, when you said you try to do like T V movies. I think what they want to do though, especially with you know the the, the budget and everything like that. They think they're gonna get a Transformers yeah, it's film going. Yeah, it's and like, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. But it's I, just not. Some things that we'll talk about later. Um, probably we can save it for, for something that we do at PNC or whatever like that. 
Um, mm-hmm. I think they had some missteps along the way with the movie and how they executed it. And that's probably why yeah. they didn't bring in the audience and the and the money that they thought they were going to. But if I'm doing the movies, if, since they're continu- since they want to continue on with them, I basically, you know, base it around a series. So it was like, hey, however many movies you want to do, break it down into movies about the series. So finish out the Mighty Morphin series. Go in the uh, Zio. You can fucking skip Turbo for all I fucking care. And if you do, see, and I, if, if I, you do I Turbo, personally don't make Justin a fucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. You guys knew it was fucking coming. (laughs) So listen, as far as that goes, the only reason I say do the made-for-TV film is it just, it would work better in the beginning and then dump them. Shit, you could just do straight to DVD at that point. Air it once on their channel and it goes straight to DVD. That's, That's how they used to do it. Yes. And it worked. I looking at my power range of VHSs right now. Yes, that is how it worked. Yeah, it worked. You know, they're they're expecting. You know, Transformers worked in the beginning because it intrigues everyone. Mm-hmm. Power Rangers does not. Yeah, and that's you know that's, that's just maybe with the comic, maybe it's with like, the comic now they got they yeah. got a little bit more there, but you know. I think they should try to go original. Don't base it on something specific because then someone, everybody's hopes are too high at yeah. that mm-hmm. point. Take a series that, you know, maybe a series that didn't do well in Sentai. Maybe a or series that a we series didn't they do. skipped over. Like, that's that's what I'm saying. Don't touch Die Ranger. I got plans in work. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the thing. Make something that someone will have no expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Right? No one knew what they were getting with Transformers. And no one knew what they were getting with G.I. Joe. And one worked, one didn't. Truth. I think. And the funny thing is about that statement, I think it's opposite. Because I know you're talking that Transformers is the one that worked and G.I. Joe is the one that didn't. And I actually. Transformers 1 worked. Yeah, the rest of the fun. And then it fell apart. Yeah. I actually quite enjoyed the G.I. Joe films. I don't think I ever really liked any other Transformers. I went into that film specifically expecting nothing. And it wasn't the worst thing I had ever seen. The se- I liked the second one more than the first one yeah, because... definitely. This is this is during a why is Shannon Tatum in this movie? Mm. That was my face. Mm. Where I go see a movie and I'm trying to figure out why he's in it. But then... With the second one, they actually made likable characters. What a concept. Yeah. But they, I also think that they shot real high with Bruce Willis thinking it was going to bring more people in. Yeah. I mean, but uh, they did. can you blame them? Like, he looks like the original fucking G.I. Joe. Yeah, but it would have been, it would have been, I don't know. And that, that whole, that whole concept just kind of bothered me. But but then there, there's also something that both of those miss- movies were lacking. They did not lean into the established franchise, Correct. where like there was no callbacks to anything <laughs> that came before, other than you know, hey, this is the original Joe. Like no callback. Yeah. Which also happened with Power Rangers. <laughs> like they they had one callback to hardcores, but not not nothing. And one they had yeah one callback to hardcores and one to casuals, and that was it. Yeah. And one of those callbacks was Lightspeed. Yeah, because was uh, it was Lightspeed and was it Dino Thunder? I think it was Reefside and uh, Mariner Bay. It was Mariner Bay, and I think the other one might have been Ninja Storm. Right. Whatever. No, one, Reefside. no, it was Dino. It was Dino Thunder. Yeah, one of them. Who cares? Um, yeah. And then the other one was the Tommy and Kimberly uh, cameo. Yeah. Which now apparently is useless because guess what? It's not Tommy and Kimberly, it's Tommy and Cat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean she did dear John the fuck out of him. <laughs> like Kimberly went out with like a gangster. Hey, I met somebody else. 
this letter is me breaking up with you while I got his cock in my mouth. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that may not what have been said. I don't remember. I blocked that episode out. <laughs> It always does. <laughs> and if anybody that's actually going to be watching or listening to this sees us in California in a month, <laughs> this is exactly what's going to happen all day. All day. There's, the, the, this is how we get down, folks. These are, these are warnings. Uh, <laughs> so what you're going and expect, to and expect there to be more alcohol involved, too. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Go fireball it up. Oh, Lord, yeah, don't give that to Jay. <laughs> oh, man. I paid. I paid for that one. I I, I deeply apologize. <laughs> well, can, is it really? Is it, is it really our? Is it our fault? Like technically, it got hijacked, and then it was given to people. <laughs> like, so Listen, much. if I if I brought a bottle and. Someone else decided to drink all of it. He wasn't walking away. Well, in, in our defense, that bottle was there before they were, and it was being passed around a drinking circle. In our defense, so right. you passed it around. We we had a, a circle around us that we were talking to. You know, it's like, hey, you know, and fireball, and then they showed up. I was like, oh, fireball, and then literally right. just took it, and everybody was like, everybody <laughs> take a fucking drink, and I'm like, oh lord, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, that was a bad night, but yeah, you live and you learn, I guess. And people get banned from the convention, but we're not gonna speak on that. <laughs> yeah, there. we won't. I, I was too involved with that. Yeah, that was some fun stuff. So, uh, what else? Oh, uh, so they've gone to the fandom to cast Power Rangers now. That's weird. Yeah. Wait, what? They've gone to the fans to cast Power Rangers now, which is oh, weird. No. Now it's fucked. <laughs> Would you like to be on Power Rangers sending in all this? I'm not lying. I'm not going to lie when I say that I, uh, you know, not gonna lie and say I didn't audition, but not for actual Ranger. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I totally uh, posted the video and sent them the link for it. It wasn't the view of no fucking Ranger. I'll be honest. There's probably a handful of people that we we know personally, whether it be just in passing or we've actually held conversations with. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the, the 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 hardcore cosplayers at PMC. I could see a lot of them being considered. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say for sure one person in the fandom that would work. Mm. Yeah, well, just, but uh, I mean, no, go on. But look at Yoshi and Peter. Right. You know, they they clearly they were doing work elsewhere. It wasn't just like yeah. I'm a fan, hire me. You're right. But you know, oh, that was the other one, Yoshi. Yeah, there we he's go. the other one. That's the that's the eighth. Mm, I just okay. couldn't think of. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they, they both were involved in other things, whether it be stunt work or suit work. I think Yoshi was a suit actor, just like uh, Dan Southworth for yeah. a while. And that's where where he got his foot in the door. Mm. You know, right. that was probably my favorite casting ever since the originals, just because Who's knowing that... Or Yoshi? Yoshi, mm. just because he was he was one of us at one point, yeah. and he still is. He's still a huge fan of of anime and and whatever else that he's into. Yeah, I mean there was there was some random Deadpool uh, versus San Diego Comic Con or or versus Comic Con or whatever video that was floating around on Facebook, and there's Yoshi dressed like Nightwing, having uh, this yes. little little funny battle with with Deadpool. It was pretty funny. And it's just like, you can just see that he enjoys this. Yeah. Which is cool. And that's, that's the kind of shit that I enjoy. You know, Paul and uh, Paul Schreier and Jason Arby, they enjoy meeting fans. They enjoy they interacting. Really yeah. Even outside of it. You know, that's why I've been able to, to, to stay close with the two of them for shit. Eight years now. And, 
you know, that's what they need to find. If they're going to go to the fandom, they have, that's the only thing that I can say is they need to find somebody who respects the, the, I guess the fandom and the Mm -hmm. product, but I mean, you're not asking for too much if you go that route. Yeah. Because uh, one of the casting things that they released was uh, for comic relief characters. It was a dude and a chick character, which is what Courtney and I in our videos auditioned for. Was hey, okay. I can be comic relief because you know, I, I I find myself humorous. You know, others do as well. But the thing is, like they does lately with I don't even know the dude's names up in, in Ninja Steel. Their comic relief. They don't, they they don't commit to the characters. It's I'm just pretty like, sure it's the one dude's cliche. like 45 years old. Yeah, it's it There's... seems like they've seen like a 80s movie of how this character is supposed to act, and they're emulating it. They're not making a character their own, and that's what's missing. What your bland actors and no one's making the characters their own anymore. Yeah, I mean, you notice who's not on the on the the list for PMC right now? <laughs> Those two. Yeah. Uh, true. They ain't never gonna get invited. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I... the only time the only time the comedic relief worked again was mm-hmm. when they cast Paul Schreier to come back with true. You know the character that was playing Jason Narvey's son. They went yeah. to the well. They pulled it. They pulled out nostalgia. And something for the kids, and it worked. Yeah, that was that. That aspect of Samurai worked. Yeah, I personally liked the recasting of of uh, Ricardo Medina as Decker. Decker, yeah, I enjoyed that aspect of it, and I didn't Which, completely hate that season, although it felt like it drug on a lot. It did, but you know oh, when they did. when they had the stuff between Decker and Jade, and I enjoyed it. And then I that's also that. something that I think has been missing. Like, so Sentai has been doing it for years. They'll bring back a former cast member and to play a completely different role. Like, embrace what you have. They don't embrace their past outside of Tommy. Yeah. yeah You're right. I'm getting sick of that. Well, let's hold on. Hold on. Johnny Young Bosch came back mm-hmm. three times after his series was uh-huh. done. In space. Was uh, it just in space in Operation Overdrive? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I I think they go to that well because there's so many fanboys and fangirls that are just like Tommy Tommy Tommy. And listen, I have no personal vendetta towards the character. Because it's not like he wrote all the stuff. Somebody was behind that saying, hey, let's do this. Yeah. Right? Sure, he might not be the greatest actor. But, I mean, I don't know. I kind of, with that reveal yesterday mm-hmm. with Scott, I saw a different image than what we've seen previously. Mm-hmm. Conventions with 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 Jason David Frank for a while felt forced. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like that anymore. I think there's like a different I don't know. I think things have, have turned around a little bit. But mm-hmm. you know, we'll see what happens with this with this new thing. I'm I'm assuming it's all filmed, right? So it's not a Hasbro product. It's still considered a Saban product. Yeah. Which, mind you, as of right now, Saban Brands is closed for business. That is also true. Right. What time is it? It's yeah. about that well, time. As of July well, for 2nd. you. Well, yeah. As of July 2nd, <laughs> the doors are closed. Hmm. So, you know. So the Hasbro era begins now. Let's hope it's a good one. I think it will be. Do you, let's 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 talk Hasbro and PMC. Okay. We obviously have no information. Right. 
I don't think we're going to have any information until we get there. Until, well, at the latest, sure. But I think here's my theory: if there's even one post or image Power Rangers related coming from Hasbro, I think there's a good sign that they might be present. Whether it be just for a panel Mm -hmm. or an unveiling Mm -hmm. at PMC. That's my gut because a lot of PMC rode on Bandai and Saban. Yeah. Yeah. And Scott now, I think the smartest thing Scott ever did was get an exclusive that is straight for the con and sell it early. Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody and their mother wants that Dracon. I know comic dealers who own stores who have specifically bought the non-attending badges just to get a bunch of those figures. Wow. And that's that's a testament to the to the planning and the product itself. Yeah. And Scott was smart to do it. Same thing with that pop. That pop is not going to stay in my house very long. <laughs> that thing's gone. Oh, uh, so you got one too? I did. Yeah. But uh, I have yeah. the one that I want. I don't I'm not a big black yeah. and gold. I don't need repaints and variants. Nah. I like my screen accurate and or you know, things I enjoy. Yeah. But the black and gold, it's not my thing. Somebody else's, it's going to be somebody else's thing, and I'm attending, so therefore I can get one, and somebody else is going to win off of my labor. Yeah. But, I mean, what do you feel, rumor-wise or theory-wise, could happen with Hasbro and PMC? See, now, with this, like... My suspicion is like without a cast, like I don't think we're going to get a cast reveal this year. I I feel like we already have a cast by this point. Yeah. So I don't think that's going to happen either. Maybe we'll get a trailer. Maybe that was cut together by Saban and given off to Scott early. Mm-hmm. Uh, who knows? But to be completely honest, I, I yeah, I don't think there's going to be the presence as there has been in previous years. Yeah. And that's a good feeling to have because if it does happen, I'll be more excited, right? Because it's Mm -hmm. been an expectation every year. We expect it during that Nickelodeon Saban Power Rangers panel that the last three minutes is dedicated to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been the last three years or three shows, I should say. So... I I would agree with you. I don't think it's going to happen. One good thing that could possibly happen from this, and I'm going to reach out to certain individuals and see if it can get done. Mm -hmm. If Saban is no longer a thing, Saban is the reason we couldn't have an After Dark panel. Mm. Oh. So there's a chance that we could try to bring that back. Because my favorite favorite experience from PMC3, not only was the After Dark panel hearing the different stories – with the cast of like jokes that they played on each other and whatever. Yeah. Was the ADR panel with Scott Pager. Oh yes, it, absolutely. That, that was, was hysterical with, with I'm going to, I forget their, their character name and I forget their actual names. Uh, 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 Guzman and yeah. uh, Philip uh, John Pierre. What, what's his? Uh, well, yeah. Philip G. Marie. Uh, yeah. what That's is it. it. Uh, Max yeah, and yeah. Danny from uh, Wild Horse. Correct. Yep. Their, their rap battle to Biggie Smalls <laughs> was the greatest thing ever. Like, what was it? I think it was Gimme the Loot. Right? I, I, think I, so. I, I had a five-year-old with me, so I missed all the 18-plus panels. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was great. And then here in... So there was one of the things that they did was... Uh, Kerrigan and uh, sorry, it's late where I'm at. I'm drawing blanks on names right now. Uh, Barbara going back and forth ADR sessions, and they would drop a line back to one another. And it was Goldar and Rita getting real dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like that's the stuff that 
we as adult fans yeah. want to experience at things like this, right? Yeah. If you go to a convention and Kevin Smith is doing a panel and he didn't curse once, it's <laughs> not a good time, yeah. right? Uh-huh. Because that's who he is. Yeah. So to see these people outside of the element of the programming – and to see them in their natural element, just having fun is more enjoyable to us fans because it sees it, it's showing them in a different picture. Yeah. It's like you said, uh, meeting some of the actors made you want to go back and watch their series. Mm-hmm. Like at the last uh, PMC, was it talking to Andrew Gray? And um, and I'm like, and he's just like, yeah, this. I was like, I kind of going to watch Megaforce. And as soon as I watched the first episode, I was like, this is a mistake. But you know. Like me, like meeting somebody personally makes me a fan, and then I want to like see the work that they put in. And, but you know, it's yeah, just you look at I, it. I'll just be a fan. Yeah, you want to look at it in a different light. Yeah, but uh, but then sometimes you just got to be a fan yeah. without looking at their product. Yeah. but yeah. still. Yeah, it's it's just it's one of those things that are just it's. I feel like I'm going to this show for the first time because typically in previous years, it's like you can expect A, you can expect B. Like last time when we went, we knew we were going to see something new from from Bandai. We knew we were going to see this new cast. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's that element has been taken away now. And without that, I don't know how to feel going into the show. Yeah. I think that I, I think part of that is also because of the kind of the lead up to it as well as far as like announcements and there has been a lot of weird energy I guess or or weird stuff going on with the convention and with announcing things and and shit like that so I think that that's probably played into that as well. If they said the fifteenth of every month until July. We are going to put out X amount of guests. I probably would have been okay with that. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't until last week I sent a message to someone and said, hey, the month's almost over. Shouldn't we be getting guests? Oh, yeah, it's coming tomorrow. And sure enough, it came out. Previous years, Scott or the PMC page would state, Monday new guests on like a Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Or at San Diego last year would would be the announcement of tickets go on sale on such and such date. And they did that. They do that every time. But, you know, it's just the the certain the certainty of certain elements are not there. Yeah. And I think it has a lot to do with this, you know, changing of the guard being Hasbro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is there it's, an embargo that they can't talk about certain things or they can't be involved with certain things because Bandai technically still has the rights until what is it, April? So it's so, like, is Bandai even going to be at the show or, or are they not going to be? Like, I, I don't know. It's just well, too many unanswered questions and there's uh, too many things to, to just be skeptical about. And they lost like two really big sponsors and like a lead up you lose Toys R Us and Bandai like that well as far as Toys R Us goes I don't believe they were ever a real true legitimate sponsor Mm -hmm. because you never saw a promo inside a Toys R Us store truth Mm. sure you had the Toys R Us logo all over PMC but did they actually purchased that you know what i'm saying like yeah. did they need to clearly they didn't because it didn't work or it could have just you know been a california thing saying as why advertise and des moines iowa at a toy to us there to well even then i don't even believe that I, I don't believe they had anything truly to do with it i think it was more or less like bandai had exclusive items for saban through mm-hmm. Toys R Us, so that's why they were considered a sponsor. Yeah. Okay. I can see it. I think it's going to be interesting, though, just to see 
you're right. Like it, it's different. Like there's a lot of uncertainty, uncertainty of, of of what's gonna happen and how things are gonna turn out. So I'm interested to see, you know, if Hasbro is gonna be there, what they're gonna do, all that stuff. Yeah, and like I said, if if there's any mention of anything at San Diego, then that's a good indication that maybe they'll be involved. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd be even okay with just a panel. They just pop in and just say, hey, this is the plan. This is where we see it going. You're the diehards. You've come across you know, the United States from other continents of the world, and you're all here to support this, this, this brand. So let's give you this. Yeah. Yeah. Which, but if there's, as a, if, like, as a fan, which is, that's all you can really hope for. I mean, this whole show started as a, a, a I think it started as a make a wish. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a non profit. Yeah. And trust me when I say it's a non profit, <laughs> which sucks because you should at least break even during a non profit. Yeah. True. Um, any and, and as far as like what you originally said, do we think there are any rumors or have any theories? I mean, I I don't know what to expect. I mean, just because I'm not too well versed on inside stuff like like you are. Um, I know it's Hasbro, so I'm expecting at least like a toy announcement or some type of toy information. I mean, I want to see what they're going to keep doing with this legacy line. Yeah, that's where I wanted to go with it. Do you feel that, and this is this is more of a a wishful thinking question, mm-hmm. but do you think that their acquisition of the entire brand gives them now rights for the molds of Bandai America product of PR? That's a good question. Like... Huh. Because PR is technically owned by Saban, mm-hmm. which now is owned by Hasbro. Truth. So wouldn't that all fall into, well, that's our product, that's our imagery, that's ours now. I, I would mean, hope, but, again, it's wishful thinking, but... Yeah, but Bandai still has a stake in Sentai. Correct, but the legacy figures are not Sentai. That is true. Oh, I, I mean, I think if they the re the, the redesigned molds for the legacy line are not Sentai. They are not. Okay. Right. The power sword wasn't Sentai. The, I mean, Saba kind of, but it's different scale. From my understanding, it's technically different. As long as it is ten percent, like if you have, if you have an image, mm-hmm. and you take that image, and you slightly change it up to ten percent or more, it is no longer considered that individual's image. Hmm. That's how they that, all those like dollar store and five and below things where you see like those knockoff Ranger toys. Mm-hmm. Ah yes, what they is- change the image. They change the imagery just by ten percent or more. And it's no longer considered uh, copyrighted. Shockingly has a Batman in it. Yeah. Batman that's painted red. Uh, good times, man. Yeah, I mean, I think if, if they bought the franchise, then naturally um, they would get, you know, everything with it. So I, I would naturally think that they get the, you know, their, their toy line. I would assume that they that they had their lawyers or they had whoever negotiate for those fucking molds. Yeah. I would hope so because then that just that leads to the whole then they have the entire product line that has always that has ever been released. So if they wanted to do a, a legacy Astro Megazord that fit into the line that they've already created, will they own the imagery that was originally on, on the boxes because that wasn't Sentai, that was Power Rangers. Right. Sure. They own everything at that point. I would think. I'd so that's to, you know. I have to look look up and see if there's any more details released about the uh, about the transaction. But I mean, I was I mean, it's Hasbro. How could you not? 
you know, if you're going to buy any type of property and they've been releasing toys for said property, how could you not get the right to produce those toys? Or at least no shit. To produce, to continue producing the toys. But even if no they shit. Did, but even if they didn't, do you think Hasbro can produce quality legacy figures even without the molds? Do you think Hasbro could make their own molds and produce quality figures in line I, with what we already have? I feel, and this is me being completely genuine, this is me not trying to talk up and this is not my wishful thinking, but I see the products that they're putting out. Mm-hmm. And I have to believe that they have all intentions of doing the same thing just with Power Rangers, right? So yeah. Black Series is, it's, is, a, is a line of its own. You don't see that in Marvel Legends crossing paths at all. The only thing that would be considered maybe shared was when they did the three and three quarter Marvel figures and G.I. Joe, right? Because they were so mm-hmm. close to scale. Yeah. But even then, like a lot of the G.I. Joes were original original molds. Yeah. A lot of the, the you know, the legends now are becoming original molds because now they have this whole new, you know, um, what are they calling it? Digital scanning, yeah, scan face, painting? Yeah, or the, the digital face scan and stuff that they're using on the Marvel Legends. But that's paint. Yeah. That's a paint application. Yeah. So, like, if you looked at the original Scarlet Witch from the MCU and the new, the latest one, it's the exact same mold, just new paint scale, and it looks more like Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah. It's it's wild. Yeah. But I so in that aspect, I have to believe that they're going to do good. The only thing that I'm questioning is the Zords. I was never a big Zord guy anyway, so it's mm-hmm. like. With the legacy line, I was becoming that, right? I was getting all the, the legacy stuff that they were putting out because I didn't have all of it when I was a kid. Right. So now with the legacy, that, that was kind of my starting point. And uh, I have yet to be disappointed with any of it. So I would, you know, if Hasbro was, was, was smart, they would, they would dive right into that legacy line. Whether it be Hasbro toy shop stuff or, I mean, shit, look what they did with that, that Jabba's barge. They put that up for 5,000. They needed 5,000 people to buy that at $500 a pop. They made it the day before it ran out. Yep. $500 toy needed 5,000 done. You're probably asking a lot of us as Power Ranger fans for 5,000 orders or something but it's possible you know you get them five thousand orders from three people (laughs) knowing a power ranger fandom three people (laughs) like something like that wouldn't really worry me um yeah because i know that there are plenty of of people who will probably pay for that but you're right but i'm just saying like that's that's where my mind is like a lot of people are just like oh well hasbro's gonna da 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 and blah 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 like i said my only fear is if they try to make megazord's transformers that's that's my only fear yeah because i don't want to sit there for 20 fucking minutes trying to figure out how to pop the goddamn arm out right yeah it's megazords it's fold snap fold snap and that's how they're formed like yeah yeah. Yeah. I, 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 uh, it's my only problem with it. But I think they're going to do good, to be honest. So The I, only I, thing that's going to piss me off as far as figure wise. Okay. All right. All right. His legacy figures. I, I enjoy them. I have all of them. I'm trying to acquire all of them, even though Bandai is going to be done. And now mm-hmm. we're going to get a new scale. Yeah. No matter what, we're getting a new scale. Hasbro works in two ways. There are five points of articulation in the, you know, the five inch scale and then their high end Marvel Legends and or Black Series. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They still do three and three quarter. I wouldn't mind seeing a three and three quarter line. (laughs) 
Yeah. Yeah. Like you can put out more. You can put out a lot more at that point. Because right now with me, as far as buying legacy figures, I just grab one here and there based on how I'm feeling about the figure. There's like nothing set that was like, I have to have that outside of the gold Zeo Ranger. Yeah. Did you find that yet? No. But uh, I pre-ordered it from uh, GameStop. Nice. Speaking of GameStop, some news dropped today. Uh Uh-oh. They have a black Zeo legacy figure. Oh, no, it's the Gold Ranger. Are you sure? Because there's a gold one as well. No, because I was looking it up, and I was like, the fuck is the black? Because I was there, and a dude pulled up the picture. I go, it's the Gold Zeo Ranger. Okay. I was hoping it was going to be the Black Psycho Ranger. You just ruined my hope. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Or it could have been a Phantom Ranger. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I got, I got more hope than I have fear for Hasbro. Yeah. Especially when it comes to the toys, man. Like I just cannot see them dropping the ball with the toys. They've been a toy company for so long. I mean, I, yeah. how could they? Right. The only way they could is if they try to put a spin on it, and then that's just going to piss people off. Yeah. Which they've learned from before, because I was watching the toys that made us, and the stuff that has like, yeah, we kind of messed up here, and then, oh, uh, we kind of messed up there. So, like, <laughs> hopefully they've learned from those mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, anything else you want to cover? Or are we are we good to wrap it up? I mean, I, I think I've said all I can say uh, about this, Rob. You got work yeah, tomorrow. I, yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, no, I think uh, I think we we've droned on enough about it. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, guys, stay in. Uh, that'll be it for this episode. Episode number two of uh, Power Rangers Month. We got uh, a couple of more uh, podcast episodes coming out, and we have some more videos um, coming out as well. So look forward to that, um, and just stay tuned for you know more content that we're going to be working on going forward. All right, thank you. Later. Peace out, people. I'm going to have to get a new intro <laughs> or outro. Rather. Just take, just take the ran over music. Nah. <laughs> I'm going to make something. I'm going to make something. Peace out, people.